Okay, chapter eight, this is gonna be part one. It's on long-term assets and how we account for them. Now, when a company purchases a long-term asset, they need to determine, now remember, we're talking about long-term assets that are used by the business. We have to first determine, is it tangible, intangible, or a natural resource? Tangible means we can see and touch it, intangible means we can't, or a natural resource, such as we buy a piece of land because there's diamonds in the ground. How do we account for the costs? Then we try to figure out, do we allocate the costs and what method do we use based on debt? And then we're gonna look at what happens when we discard or sell long-term assets. Now, first we have fixed assets. These are also tangible assets. Include assets such as land, building, vehicle, desk, and equipment. Now here, some remember right from the beginning, we never allocate the cost of land. These are also sometimes referred to as tangible assets. We also have intangible assets, assets that cannot be seen, touched, or held. Include patents, trademarks, and goodwill. And then we have natural resources. Again, this is when we buy something and our goal is to extract it, such as oil, minerals, or coal. Now the thing to remember is for fixed or tangible assets, we allocate them using a term called depreciation. For intangible assets, we allocate based on a term called amortization. And for natural resources, we use a term called depletion. We're gonna focus on depreciation. Now, when we first thing you need to do is determine what's the cost of the fixed asset and remember the rule is it must include all costs associated with getting the asset ready for its intended purpose so here is an example we bought a piece of land for sixty-five thousand with the notes payable it had delinquent property taxes which are included we have title insurance that we have to pay and the cost of leveling the land and then we constructed a building, and in addition, we put in fencing, a company sign, and special lighting. And we also signed a one-year maintenance, ongoing maintenance contract for the property. Now, the first thing you always have to do is identify the costs that should be capitalized. These are, when we say capitalized, we're talking about the costs that are going to appear as an asset on the balance sheet. Then we're going to determine what categories they are in, particularly when it's become associated with land because you can't appreciate land. So when we look at this, the first thing we say is, first of all, the, the cash and the notes payable, the property taxes, only the delinquent ones, not future ones, the title insurance and the cost to level the land. And if we're able to sell anything, it would be a credit that would all go against the land. The building cost would be for the building, and then the fencing, the sign, and the special lighting would be considered built, uh, land improvements. And then the 5000 would just be expense, because that's an ongoing expense, and that is not capitalized. So the first thing we did was we put our costs into these categories. The land total $314,600. And then we have the land improvements at 59.8. Now, why we separate land improvements from building costs? Because they're going to depreciate differently. Okay, the building is going to be over 20, 30 years, but land improvements probably weren't. They have different lives. So that's what we do. Remember, whenever you are going to capitalize something, you need to include all the costs that you need to spend to get it ready for its intended purpose. Now let's look at another type of issue that may occur. It's called a lump sum purchase. And what it's what happens when a company goes out and buys a whole bunch of assets for a price that's less than the fair market value of what you've received. What we need to do when this happens is we have to allocate the cost based on the fair market value of what was received. And we do this by using a weighted average. We do this a lot in accounts. 
So let's look at an example. We bought a uh, land, building, and equipment for six hundred and forty thousand. However, they have an appraised value of a hundred thousand for the land, five hundred thousand for the building, and the equipment was four hundred thousand. So now what we have to do is we have to first determine what was paid, or what we call consideration, six hundred forty thousand. What's the fair market value? Well, here's the listing, and it totals a million, which is greater than the consideration, so that means we have to prorate it. Now, how do we prorate it? What we have to do is take the fair market value of each item divided by the total fair market value times the consideration. So for the land, the fair market value is 100000 out of the million dollar total fair market value equals 10% times the consideration of 640, which tells us the land is going to be allocated 64,000 of the 640,000. And we're going to do the same for the building and the equipment. Now we have all the information we need to do our journal entry. And this is what it would look like. The land would be 64,000. The building would be 320, the equipment, and then of course we said it was a notes payable and we would credit that. Now that concludes our first part of three parts for chapter 8.